So this video is all about real estate investing. I get hit up all the time of people asking me, how did they get in the game? How did they invest in real estate? And in this one, I'm gonna be brutally honest about the things that I've done, the things that I've tried and failed at, so you can make a great decision about investing here in the greater Houston area. Hi, my name is Aaron, and every week I'm helping buyers relocate to and throughout the greater city of Houston and the surrounding suburbs. So if you need to know anything about where to eat, sleep, live, play, hit me up morning, noon, or night. I'm your guy. All of my info is going to be in the bottle below. I'll drop my number on the screen right now, but it doesn't matter if you're a day, a week, a month, a year, two years, three years out. I want to be a resource to you in your decision to buy and invest in the greater city of Houston and the surrounding suburbs. Investing in real estate is not easy, but it is simple. And so the, the first thing that we have to do when we're talking about investing in real estate is to have the mindset that not all investing looks the same for every person. Everybody also has their own different tolerances and things that they are comfortable with doing. Um, and so you have to go into it with the lens of you yourself. You are the investor and you are the, the operator of your own ship and you can make decisions that are best for you and your tolerance. Um, and so you don't have to chase Grant Cardone and be 10X and trying to do $700 billion worth of real estate a year. That's just not the goal that you have to do. For many people, one one good decision where you make you know an extra five to $10,000, $20,000 a month is a great decision. For some people, the cash flow of a great rental is is everything that they want and need for right now to offset some of those bills and get them to a lifestyle where they're living uh debt and and responsibility free right so every person is not the same and everyone's tolerance is different and based on that you know there's going to be different barriers of entry and different risk factors and different stakes for each type of these investment tools that i'm going to provide you with some information on today. And so to hop right into it, the number one way to get into real estate investing is to go off market. Now, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. This is the one that I have struggled with the most. Um, I've spent thousands of dollars. I know that I've spent hundreds of hours and I've gotten very, very close to getting some off market stuff where I could flip it or rehab it or keep it as a rental. Um, and it just seemed like every time that I would almost get there, either a buyer would fall out or my financing would be a little bit shaky or whatever the situation would be. I just never got to the closing table on mine, but I've, I've had 10 houses under contract at this point. Um, you know, I've, I've done some research and saw that the data for, you know, off market opportunities is like 25. So I'm about halfway there on the failure before I, I'm supposed to get to my first one. Um, but it has been a struggle to get something off market and what off market means is basically just a house not on the MLS. And so you can do that many different ways. You can take that and, and go talk to for sale by owners. Um, so people that aren't listed on your, your local real estate sites, your Zillow's, your truly is all those places, um, your realtor.coms. Um, you can go to for sale by owners direct. You can send out mailers. You can do like I was doing for a brief period of time where I was cold calling different areas where you get a name, number and uh, email and you're calling these people at random out of the blue and saying, hey, do you want to sell your house? Right. And so I've attempted all of those things. Driving for dollars is another one that I've done where you basically drive around your neighborhood and depending on where you live and the, the kind of place that you are looking to to buy in, you know, when a neighborhood is transitioning or you know when there's an opportunity. If you're driving down the street and all the houses are super pretty and all the lawns are cut and then you get to this house that has a blue tarp on the roof or they have boards over the windows, that's an opportunity that you would try to get their info, send them a postcard, give them a call, uh, reach out to that seller and say, hey, you know, homeowner, is there anything that I can do uh, to, to buy this home from you, right? Like I said, I've spent thousands of dollars. I've spent countless amount of hours trying to get this done and i personally i have not done one yet i've been close on about 10 but i have not closed one so this is definitely going to be the highest barrier of entry because it's going to take either a lot of money to compete if you're in a saturated market i can't remember the numbers but there's like 
you know, 20,000 or so wholesalers and probably about a thousand of them do like 90% of the deals here in the greater Houston area. And so at this point, they just have the money, time and resources and the systems to outcompete with the, the smaller people like myself trying to get into it or the smaller people like yourself trying to get into it. But having said all of that, I still had opportunities to talk to people that they hadn't reached yet. Right. So don't give up. I'm not giving up, but it is definitely the, the hardest barrier of entry to get into uh, is talking to a, a seller or a homeowner directly and trying to get them to sell you a property without them listing it with an agent. The numbers just say that like 95 percent of people list on the MLS. So you're looking for a small niche of people that are distressed, that have a house that needs repair, that wants to give up their house for for speed and are willing to take a discount. Right. It's a very, very, very niche level of people that you're talking to. But if you can find the one that is definitely the number one place to be an investor because you're getting it at ground zero you're going to have the best price of everyone else um, you're going to have a better price than anyone that's wholesaling it to you you're going to have a better price than finding it on the mls that's the place where you want to be but it is definitely the most difficult to do and if i ever get one over the the remainder of this year or, or the coming year i'll let you know about it i'll update my video and tell you exactly what i did but so far no dice for me the next way to get into real estate investing is to just straight up buy a house as a rental or buy a property as a rental. And that because it is not going to be your primary residence, the higher barrier entry on this one is that you're going to be required to put down a much larger down payment. In all the instances that I've spoken to lenders and, and private lenders, they're going to put down or require you to put down at least 20 to 25 percent as a down payment. And so for a place like a Houston, where the, the average single family home sales price is over 400,000, that's looking at $80,000 that you have to have saved or put off to the side that is going to be able to be deployed to real estate. And so many people don't really have a strategy to save 80,000 you know, in a, in a couple years. Some people don't have the means or the finances or the discipline to put them um, aside that much money in order to to put it into real estate. Right. So the barrier of entry for a straight out just investment property where you're going to either turn it into a rental or Airbnb or something like that, you're going to need some kind of a level of higher level of funds than you would be if you're going to do some of the easier methods that I'm going to get into. Um, but this is like the next way that you're getting into it and, and the cash flow here is key, right? So you're depending on the level of real estate that you're trying to buy, if it's more turnkey, if it's a fixer, you know, there's different factors here, but in this rental income side, you're looking at more at cash flow. So the numbers are going to have to make sense in order for you to make any money on this. You're going to have to think about, you know, property management. Are you going to do it? Are you going to be the handyman or handy woman? Are you going to have somebody on staff? All of these things are kind of stuff that can go wrong that you want to think about before you just go out and buy a random rental. Um, but cash flow is key and you want to make sure that you're cash flowing enough to pay for either that handyman or handy woman, or if that's going to be you, or if you're going to be the landlord and collecting all that money, or if you're going to have a property management, you also want to be able to cover that and have a rainy day fund for repairs when you're going out and just buying a straight rental. The third way that you can invest in real estate right now is to buy a multifamily. Now I get hit up from a lot of people that see my videos all around the U.S. And they reach out and they're just saying, hey, man, I want to relocate to the Houston area. I want to buy a fourplex. I want to buy it. And they just start throwing out numbers like areas like where they're from. So I know in the Northeast, there's a lot of places where you can get a row home of four or five or six houses. And it's and, and that just happens over and over and over again. Um, I have a couple of people that were moving from like Jersey and Philly. And I know that row homes and things like that are super popular up there. I had a couple that was moving from Cali and they, you know, they were looking for a fourplex out here. And for whatever reason in Houston, there's not really like the hugest like multifamily push. There's not really many places here where we're zoned for multifamily. And in many instances, the biggest unit that you'll see is a duplex. And so 
for a duplex, you know, numbers have to be tighter. They have to be, you know, the numbers have to make sense in most cases because you aren't getting the full three, four, five, six units. You have to be able to cash flow and it has to make sense for your renter to pay a majority of the the mortgage and because in many times the areas in the greater houston area that allow multifamily aren't like prime i would say class a areas where you can do a good rental and it'd be a, a class a area where everything is top notch you have the great schools the great amenities and all that stuff right you're going to be coming with a certain area that looks a certain way and so because that area is in a certain area and looks a certain way are you going to be able to get top dollar for that other unit that you're looking at? So there's trade-offs to doing multifamily here, but there are some pros to doing multifamily. If you're going the multifamily route, you don't have to get approved for the entire amount of that mortgage because there's a percentage of what a future tenant could be paying you is calculated into your overall approval budget. So if you would have been approved for let's say 300,000 on your own with that rental income from the proposed tenant, you might be approved for 400,000, right? So there's definitely some perks to going the multifamily route just in the greater city of Houston and the surrounding suburbs. We don't have a plethora of multifamily opportunities to get you know, in the game and feel like some of these people that you'll probably go on Google and see and they're like, the first thing you need to do is buy a quad. And the next thing you need to do is flip that into an Aplex. We just don't have that many opportunities to do that. Most of our units here are duplexes or they are like a hodgepodge. If they're a quad, they're like a hodgepodge of like a house and then like two or three other little houses on a big lot. It's just a weird setup. You, you very rarely just go and see a solid just fourplex here in the greater Houston area. But the, the one benefit that I really, really love about buying a multifamily, because it's gonna be your primary residence, you can get in as little as 3.5% down. So remember that last option that I talked about, just buying a straight out rental, because you're gonna be living in it, the, the bank is gonna look at this as your primary residence and you can get in with as low as 3.5% down. Or if you have the credit, you can get in with a 3% conventional down uh, for your down payment to buy a huge, hopefully cash flowing multifamily property. The next way that you can get into real estate investing, and this is probably the most common that I've seen with so many of my clients that especially are buying in these areas that are up and coming, like your Independence Heights, your your Edo's, your, your Midtowns, your Spring Branches, all these places that are in that transition where a lot of these new like townhome kind of communities are buying that are in great locations is they are doing roommate hacks. So a lot of the builders down here are building these structures where there's like a, a tenant space on the first floor. You have the the second story living where your kitchen and uh, like a guest bath is and then the other two rooms are upstairs. Um, the three story, four story uh, layout is probably the most common here in the greater Houston area, but most people go into it buying in those areas and those locations saying, hey, I'm going to rent this out to a coworker. I'm going to rent this out to a family member or a friend, someone that I feel somewhat comfortable with. They'll have the bottom floor. We'll share that kitchen area and I'll, I'll have my guest and my stuff is going to be on the top floor or the fourth floor. And so this is probably one of the most common because you can get in again with as low as three to 3.5 percent down um, with with minimal closing costs. And you can get somewhere that is in a great location that other people will want to be. And you can offset your overall mortgage costs with someone that you rarely see. Right. Or that you see at dinner time or for random run ins at the, the kitchen area. Right. So the one con to roommate hacking sometimes is what do you do if y'all both have guests? Is there going to be enough parking? I know in situations like where I live in the Independence Heights area, my whole community only has four guest parking spots. So if you have guests, they have guests. Where are they going to park? How are you sharing the garage? Are they renting the garage from you? Are they going to be forced to to do you take precedence and your guests take precedence because it's your house? Do they have to park on the street? Those kind of things are the things that you have to think about logistically. But roommate hacking is probably one of the easiest ways to get into uh, being an investor in real estate because you're turning those 
those other unused or unoccupied or dead rooms that you're not using as office space or your personal bedroom, you're turning that into cash flow to offset some of the expenses that you have for your current primary residence. And to take this a step further, what some people are doing right now is buying in locations and some of my clients right now are buying in locations specifically that don't have HOAs and that are Airbnb friendly and they're turning either that bottom suite or the upper suites into Airbnb cash flow and properties or they're cutting in special doors to where that, that tenant can only come in and use that bottom room um, they're putting little kitchenettes and they're converting that space into like its own self-sufficient unit where it has a bathroom, a little kitchenette and a place to be. Um, it just really depends on what your overall strategy is. But the roommate hack is probably one of the, the cheapest ways to get in, live somewhere nice and also have someone live there to offset some of the costs. The con is, is that you may have different run ins with them because you're sharing the same space where in a multi-family you're separated by walls and they had their own unit and you had your own unit so you have to balance out what is most important to you in these cases where you're doing a roommate hack for the same amount that you would probably have to spend for a multi-family you can be in a much more prime location because these type of triple stacks or quad stacks or even two-story homes are built pretty much everywhere throughout the greater Houston area. So it just depends on what you're most comfortable with. Do you want the separation, but living a little bit further out in an area that might be a little bit more in transition or a little bit more dodgy? Or do you want to be somewhere like the Heights, like uh, Shady Acres or like Spring Branch or Independence Heights, all these places that have come and people know what they are and they know that they want to be there because they're so close to the city, but you have to share a common space like a kitchen. And the easiest way to invest in real estate overall is to convert your primary residence. This is going to be our second time doing it. And each time we have gotten better and better at picking great locations and capitalizing on it. So right now in the house that I'm sitting in recording in right now, we are up about $100,000 in equity just because we picked in a great location, just like we did for our house in San Antonio all those years ago. We picked in a great location in an area that it was on the fringe that we were comfortable in, but we knew there were some trade-offs to living in that area. It was gonna be a little bit more dangerous. We knew that there were gonna be a little bit more crime stats and all that stuff. Same kind of thing here in the Independence Heights area that we bought. It's two red lights from one of the most prime locations here in the greater Houston area. And over the last two and a half years, we are up nearly a hundred thousand dollars that we are going to plan on selling this house to transfer it to buy our next primary house as well as buy some rentals the the other play that we can look at with this like we did with our first house in san antonio is to move to that next house and keep this as a rental this one is also looking like a great play because the cash flow on this one could be between six and seven hundred dollars compared to what my current mortgage is so it all depends on what your tolerance is you can get, go out there and go off market be like one of those warriors that are calling driving around spending money spending time um cold calling people doing whatever you got to do dropping off those postcards that works it just hasn't worked for me you can go out there save your money save your coins find your way to, to put that 20 to 25 percent down on a straight turnkey rental you can go out there and get a multi-family where you're paying for one unit and your other tenants are paying for the overall mortgage and hopefully you are living cash flow and debt free or you can live in a little bit better location and do a roommate hack but you gotta rub shoulders with your tenant from time to time or you can do the absolute easiest way to invest in my opinion and the lowest risk of tolerance is to buy a house that you feel comfortable in in the area that is going to do well and appreciate over time or you can do like my family has done and buy a house that you're comfortable in in an area that you know is going to trend upwards using a great real estate consultant like myself to point you in the right direction and you can live in that house enjoy it and then capitalize either by selling it to move up to get that cash to buy and invest in more real estate or you can look at the cash flow numbers and transform that into your rental as you move on to your next home whatever is the most convenient thing for you so how did i do hopefully i gave you some ways that you can get into the real estate investing game if you have any questions at all if there's anything that i can help you with i'm an open book i'll tell you everything that worked for me 
and everything that I failed at. And hopefully it helps you get into the game here in the greater city of Houston and the surrounding suburbs. And we can go and talk about this for hours. Like I said, I've, I've spent hours and thousands of dollars of my own money. So I feel pretty confident that I can point you in the right direction. If you have any questions for me, I look forward to hearing from you and I hope you have an amazing day.